It was a mystery some thought might never be solved. We don't have child abductions or kidnappings that occur. It was very unusual. A mother tucks her child into bed, closes the door, then never sees her again. It overwhelmed me. My goal was to, to solve this case. Now, after 18 long years, shocking new developments in this chilling cold case. We have cases that can now be solved, so it just means that the criminals cannot rest. It's morning, and the sleepy suburb of Midwest City, Oklahoma, has just awoken to a nightmare. Baby doll, this is your Uncle Bubba. I miss you, baby. You know the number you call us? We're all worried sick about you. You got your mama here, and your papa, and your baba. We need you home, baby. Sometime in the middle of the night, eight-year-old Kirsten Hatfield disappeared from her own bedroom, her little sister sleeping just a few feet away. There were no screams, no signs of struggle at the time. Our hopes were we would recover her very quickly. Maybe she'd gone next door and fallen asleep somewhere or was at a friend's house. But it soon becomes clear something more sinister was lurking. Police find a window in the girl's bedroom cracked open. We did have evidence on the windowsill, which, which was a blood stain. And there were other tragic clues. Tucked away along the fence line in the backyard, detectives discover young Kirsten's underwear also stained with blood. The time is precious in these type of situations. Mother uh, of Kirsten indicated she saw her last at 11.30 at night. 6.30 the next morning, she was missing. We immediately went into the mindset that the child had been taken. Investigators from several local agencies, as well as the FBI, quickly swarmed the area. We obviously canvassed the neighborhood to see if anybody had seen anything, heard anything, or anything was unusual. But other than one neighbor telling officers he heard dogs barking at around 2 in the morning, no one reports anything suspicious. We sent off the blood stain from the windowsill. We sent off the blood stain from her underwear. They did come back with an unknown male profile, but they weren't able to link the two, two samples to each other at that point in 1997. Kirsten's own mother, at the time an admitted drug user, worries the kidnapper might be someone from her troubled world. But detectives wondered, could it be someone closer to home? Well, you have to look at the family members because they're the last ones that saw her when she went to bed. The family was very dysfunctional at that, at that time, so we didn't know who was a suspect and who was not. With the full force of both local and federal authorities scouring the area, detectives remained hopeful they would find clues to young Kirsten's mysterious disappearance. It was a real whodunit. But soon, days turned into months, and before long, the case went cold. We classified as a cold case because we weren't getting very many leads after 18 years. All that seemed left were the occasional missing person signs, sadly reminding the town of the little girl who vanished without a trace. It's never been laid down. It's always been the signs of an investigator. Of course, you know, through attrition, retirement, even death, we've reassigned the case to, to additional investigators. We all want to know what happened. Then, in June of last year, a new team joined the investigation. I started going through the case and re-looking at all the evidence, and then at that point we decided, hey, technology's changed, let's resubmit our evidence. We know that any analysis that was done before would need to be redone, and we just wanted to make sure there weren't items that maybe hadn't been tested that we needed tested. Little did they know, what they were about to find would blow the case wide open. Look closely. This is what police say Kirsten Hatfield of Midwest City, Oklahoma might look like today. Nearly two decades after the eight-year-old vanished from her own bedroom in the middle of the night. We've had this case for 18 years. You always look back over your career and you, there's about a handful of cases that were either unsolved or, or you never were able to find the suspect and you think, you know, I wish if I had a magic wand, these were the cases that you want to solve. This was one of those cases. And now, the mysterious question surrounding Kirsten's disappearance might finally be answered after Detective Daryl Miller was assigned to the case, along with lab director Keisha Jones. I took the whole case file home, and I read it, you know, from cover to cover, and it, it just, it overwhelmed me. We had a full male DNA profile that was from blood scraping on the window from the crime scene, and it matched blood stains that were found on the victim's underwear. With technologies now available to law enforcement that didn't exist at the time, investigators could test the sample 
and look for a matching suspect in the police database. We ran it through CODIS, he wasn't in CODIS. So we basically had the smoking gun, we just had to figure out who it matched to. And to do that, police would have to return to the scene of the crime. At that point, um, we decided to get uh, DNA swabs from basically anyone that's ever been involved, involved in the case or brought up in the investigation, especially the males. We had over a hundred people of interest on our list and we started with individuals that um, were the closest in proximity. Including the neighbor who years before told police he heard dogs barking around at 2 a.m. the night of Kirsten's abduction, Anthony Palma. He was interviewed on two separate occasions immediately after Kirsten's disappearance. He said he'd been home all night, heard some dogs barking early in the, in the morning hours, got up to see what was going on, but nothing unusual. He even allowed the FBI agent and our police officer to search his home when we met with him. Palma and several other witnesses agree to a DNA swab, and investigators began the arduous process of sorting through all the new evidence. We took a total of 17 DNA samples and we submitted those in different rounds. Then, after the third round, one of the very last samples submitted, a match. I remember the day, because uh, our lab director, Keisha Jones, had called me down to the lab, and she goes, we got a hit. And I said, let me guess, it's Anthony Palmer. And she said, yes. That's right, the same Anthony Palma, who was so cooperative 18 years before. We realized he li he's lived there since she went missing, since 1997, and still lives there. And when police start looking into Palma's past, they find he's no stranger to violence. In the 80s, Palma was arrested for forcing his way into a woman's home, then bludgeoning her with a bottle. He served less than a year in prison then moved down the street from Kirsten Hatfield shortly after his release, just seven years before her disappearance. Yeah, I've been here 36 years, been Chief 16. So when they told me we had a positive DNA match, it brought tears to my eyes because I didn't think we'd ever get there. And when we did and we found out who it was, then I went into shock thinking, well, oh my gosh, our suspect's been two doors down this whole time. And in case there was any doubt as to the accuracy of the DNA results. In July of this year, we received a report from OSBI that indicated the blood sample from Kirsten Hatfield's panties and also the blood on the windowsill matched Anthony Palma and the match was one in 293 sextillion. One in 293 sextillion. To put that in perspective, there are only about 7 billion people on Earth. You talk about a number figure and then 21 zeros behind that. So there's no doubt that that's Anthony Palmer's blood that was on the windowsill and also in Kirsten Hatfield's panties. Though he denies any involvement, police immediately arrest Palma and charge him with the kidnapping and presumed first degree murder of Kirsten Hatfield. Anthony Palma. Anthony Palma is currently in the Oklahoma County Jail waiting uh, for his trial with no bond. For Kirsten's family, it's a bittersweet day. We're going to take this opportunity to let all of our family and friends know that we're okay and please continue to pray for us. In the end, authorities determined Kirsten was most likely targeted by Palma for sexual assault. But for investigators, this case is far from closed. There's still one huge mystery left to solve. Nobody has been found. We had a, a, a specific lead that we looked at last January where we actually went to another town in Oklahoma and did some digging in the yard because we had some information that Kirsten may possibly be buried there. We didn't find her. Obviously, when we arrested Tony Palma, we searched his house, his yard. We tore up his garage floor. We uh, looked underneath the house. Unfortunately, we didn't find her there. We really need more information as to where we would identify a search to look for Kirsten. If you look at the psychology of a child predator and person that commits these type of crimes, typically they don't do it one time and stop. Do I think there may be other victims out there? Yes, I do. We're still continuing our investigation. We're re-interviewing anybody associated with Tony Palma. We want to know about his habits, what he's been doing for the last 18 years. So one piece of this tragic mystery may have been solved, but until the body of Kirsten Hatfield is found, the case will never truly be closed.
We've taken the first step, we have an arrest, but we still don't know all the answers to the case. We are the only voice for Kirsten Hatfield. She's gone, and so it's our obligation to speak for her and on behalf of her family.